I'm listening to Snore and Radio Go Mad. Install raw parts that make me sad. So I ordered a ham fest some poor sap. Now he blames me for this piece of crap. Yep, so I've got another Valiant in the shop. Victim of the cobble job. So we're going to uncobble it and make it safe to operate. Let me give you a little tour of what the old cobbler's been up to. And then I'm going to remedy it. And we'll test the Valiant. And hopefully this ham fest special will turn into a great transmitter for the new owner. So let's start out top side. I don't see much going on in the RF section. That all looks stock. But if you swing over here to where the rectifier tubes used to be, you can see this science experiment of a diode rectification board. Lots of diodes over on this side and lots of them on that side. Somebody had a lot of fun with that. I also noticed, if you take a look down here on the meter switch, there's been something going on there. A lot of little splices and jumpers. I'm not sure why, but what I'm going to do is leave this intact, replace the filter caps, and give this thing an initial power up. Make sure that the Valiant actually transmits. All right. Now let's take a look underside. Here we are bottom side. There's a lot of cool things going on down here. Right off the bat, take a look at the filter caps. These two are the originals. But then we got these two guys along for the ride. I don't know if these failed and they jumped these in. So that has to be corrected obviously before I apply high voltage. It's also a big old waxer here. Doesn't look original. And take a look at the back of that crystal VFO switch. Man, somebody's been busy in there. Looks like they use a blowtorch to do their soldering. Not very happy about that. Now if we swing up here, you'll see we still have the old paper snozzeramus caps. Okay, little cigars. Gotta go before I even apply power. They're coming out. Also noticed in addition of a little board here, and it's got two smoked resistors on it and unfortunately that's going to the modulation transformer so this thing is really going to be a project I'm going to take it one step at a time first off let's get some fresh caps in it power it up and then we'll test the voltage on the microphone jack because I just noticed the push to talk relay is not stock this has been replaced so more than likely we've got some hazardous voltages on the microphone jack and if that's the case we're going to put in D-Lab's push to talk module in its place. So the new owner told me that he bought this at Hamfest and was told it was operational but the bias was just drifting around a little bit. I think there's a lot more going on in this Valiant besides a little drift if you get my drift. Anyway I'm going to change the caps. We'll take it one step at a time but this is going to be quite the project. Let's go. All right, so I thought before we get too crazy, I'd just power it up, make sure the filaments come on, and they do. But I also just want to see what that microphone voltage is. So we're going to get a ground right here. Let's take a look at pin 2 of the mic jack. Let's see what we got. Look at there. 200 volts, guys. You're going to put 200 volts into your microphone if we kept it the way it was. So that's obviously got to go. Well, I also determined why the meter switch was all cobbled back there. It's because it's been changed. This is not the original switch. See, you can just keep on going around in circles. So obviously, I'm going to have to dig up a stock meter switch and replace that. Oh yeah, it's getting good. I'm getting ready to carve out these filter caps, and I just had to show you this before I interrupted it. Look at the connections back here. Yeah! We're just kind of hooked around in those terminal boards doing nothing. We've got these bare wires going right next to those clamps and those go to ground. And there's probably about 800 volts there. Just waiting for some spark -arama. Well there are the new high voltage caps installed. I utilize terminal boards so they're nice and secure. Now let's get up here and change out these paper caps. 
which are also main violators, especially on the negative bias to the output tube and your modulators. You should always change these out. Now here are the low voltage power supply caps replaced. You can see the positives face this tube, but when you go over here on the negative supply, make sure that you put the negative side to the tube and the positive sides actually go to ground. All right, I have one more thing to do before we actually apply power. And what is that, you ask? I cannot turn this transmitter on with these diode boards installed, okay? They may function, but I don't consider this safe and it's bad practice. So I'm going to remove this and reinstall rectifier tubes. So there's the new 3B28 rectifiers installed. I thought, all right, let's fire this thing up. See what's going on. Well, I did, and I noticed the 3B28s weren't heating. So I got the bright idea to take a look at the 5 volt feed, which somebody has cut the wire on, and see what kind of filament voltage is going to those tubes. It's about half of what it should be. So that is why they cobbled in the diodes is because they had a bad T2 transformer in the Valiant. Isn't that great? Well, surprise, surprise, the cobbler got me. That solves the mystery of why it had that rectifier board in there rather than the rectifier tubes. It's because the filament supply was damaged. So somebody thought, well, heck, I'm not changing that transformer. I'll just put a whole bunch of diodes in there, right? Anyway, that's what usually happens when you get a good deal at a ham fest. I highly suggest if you guys are going to buy something like this, at a minimum, take a flashlight and look in the top and see if you see a bunch of things that should not be there. If you do, don't buy it. All right. So this is not a total loss. I still want to go ahead and install a push to talk module and get that 200 volts off of the mic line. So I have a D-Lab K1 module. We're going to replace that relay and lift the high voltage supply and this one will run at about 14 volts on your microphone. Then, once I get all that resolved, I need to go dig out another T2 transformer and get this thing back to stock. So first, let's put in the K1. So installation of the K1 into the Valiant is a piece of cake. You already got the footprint. My board will sit in the place of that old stock WeeWay, okay? You simply lift the leads off, transfer them to this board except for their high voltage feed. In that case, we're gonna go up here to the accessory socket and steal the six volts. And you can, so if you take a look at your schematic, you see your push to talk relay. There's the front panel switch. This line takes off to the high voltage, which we are not gonna use. That line will go to the 6 volt supply of the Valiant. All right, let's get this thing installed. All right, before I place the board and wire it up, I want to point out the color codes of these wires and where they go. All right, first, we need to cover this wire right here. It's a white wire with a brown stripe. That was the high voltage that came off of these two resistors, R20 and R19. This is the voltage divider which produces the 200 volts. You are going to abandon that wire. It will not be used. Black one here is ground. This one here, the white with the yellow and blue, is actually the key line. On this side, you see we have two blacks. This heavy one is the primary of the high voltage transformer. This one goes to your little crystal socket on the back to power your TR switch. Those two will go together. This one here, the white with the blue stripe, is the 120 volt AC feed, okay? So this will switch to those two lines. Last, we have the white wire. That goes to pin two of the mic jack. It also goes to your manual plate on off switch on the front of the transmitter. So we will reuse that as the keying pad to the K1 relay. Well, the board's wired up. I did not cover this green wire. That is the six volt AC feed. You come around here, go up along the harness, and it goes up here to pin seven of the accessory socket. 
it's pretty easy to get a hold of it there rather than trying to tag on to a tube pin okay so we are ready to test I have disabled the high voltage because we know that the 3B 28s are not going to receive the proper voltage so I have removed the plate cap wiring so we'll just be keying the push to talk module and you'll see the new voltage that's on pin 2 of the mic jack which should be somewhere between 14 and 16 volts so I got the valiant plugged in the filament switches on high voltage switches off so first let's just verify that we have 6 volts going to the K2 module and we do so if I ground that line it's going to pull in the relay and turn on the high voltage plus the keying circuit of the Valiant just like the old relay did now let's take a look at the voltage on pin 2 of the mic jack now here's the mic jack pin 2 there's your resting voltage now a little over 16 volts much less hazardous than 200 all right let's get a mic on it and key it so here we go live test of the K1 push to talk module in the Valiant remember there's no high voltage at this point but we can still see the operation so first let's do the manual switch it keys it just like it used to and now our microphone there she is super smooth operation you don't hear that banging of the switch no big clunking relays smooth as silk last step of installation is to simply adhere the board to the chassis I use this E6000 kind of like a goop glue it works great as you can see the module kind of stays in place anyway but you definitely want to adhere it to the chassis there's nothing underneath that can short out so let me cut to the schematic or hookup diagram of the K1 module into the Valiant. You can see she's pretty basic. I just followed the hookup diagram of the current schematic. So if you want one of these modules for your Valiant for enhanced safety and smooth operation, drop me a line at dlabelectronics.com. All right, I'm having big fun with Valiant lot more work to do I put in a message to the owner to give him an update of what's going on and see how he wants me to proceed but it's quite obvious that when that guy was at the ham fest the cobbler was there probably didn't have the straw hat on or I bet you he wouldn't have bought the Valiant in part two we'll continue with the repair but at least in this video I was able to show you the installation of the K1 module hope you enjoyed it well, I say goodbye to everyone I hack. Thank you folks for buying all my trash. Come on back to this county. Love take your money with no responsibility. Cobbler, that is. Set a spell. Take your wallet out. Y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs>